Welcome to Buddy V's Kitchen. And I am so excited today because I got two amazing chefs. Now, I'm no chef, I'm a good home cook. These guys are the real deal. These are the chefs at my restaurant, Buddy V's. We got my chef and partner, Kim Cantawella, and we have our executive chef, the infamous Brian Forgio. Working with these two guys, not only have I learned so much about being in a restaurant and understanding the business and just great cooking tips, but it's been a pleasure because these are two awesome guys. Well, what are you guys gonna show us how to make today? So we're doing one of our favorite dishes, one of my son's favorite dishes. Uh, mac and cheese carbonara. I mean, I'm 38, I have three kids, 19, 17, three years old. Everybody loves mac and cheese. And I think mac and cheese is a special place in uh, most Everyone. families. I, I think that's my wife's favorite. I think it's my sister Lisa's favorite. I, I could go on on favorites. It, it is such an interesting twist on mac and cheese. And the best part about it for me is the breadcrumbs on top. It just gives it that, that crunch. You know, it's that texture in your mouth that you know, almost when it you do, it up, yeah. if you do like a real fancy um, mac and cheese at home, you almost want to burn the top so you get that crispy edge. But by putting the breadcrumbs in it, I think it gives it that texture without even doing that. Uh, agreed, agreed. And uh, you guys are all going to learn how to do that. All right, guys, I'm going to take off and you show them how it's done. You're in good hands. And we start with a little pancetta bacon. Italian bacon, who doesn't like bacon, right? I mean, they think the combination of doing this, uh, bacon and mac and cheese and all that is uh, very classic. This is gonna give us that smoky flavor. Um, you know, it's carbonara, very classically, there, there's a few flavor components that you always wanna hit. You know, we're using pancetta, but classically you use guanciale, which is uh, cured uh, pork cheeks. So it is uh, kind of the same way of doing um, bacon, but they roll it up, which is what gives you that pinwheel effect. And it's Heavy just cream. Very classically salt and pepper. We're gonna let this reduce. I'm gonna add our peas. We've got fontina and smoked mozzarella. Parmesan. We usually actually American ground up padano, which is just a different name for Parmesan comes from a uh, specific region in Italy. So the American ground padano is made in the same fashion that you would make Parmigiano Reggiano. Adding a little bit of fresh peas here. Yeah, so I'm standing in today for uh, for the kid. I'm kind of like his uh, stepson here. <laughs> Thanks, buddy. <laughs> we partially cooked the cavatelli. We're gonna blanch this right now, finish blanching it. So again, sir, the, the, in the carbonara, you want to hit uh, the flavors. You know, we, we crisp up the pancetta. You want to taste the pancetta. It's black pepper, which you see here, and we always use coarse black pepper. The stuff, if it's really too uh, fine, it kind of just really uh, can overpower the palate. Here's the uh, provolone and smoked mozzarella. This will be a thickening agent and obviously a big flavoring agent for this uh, great dish. So we, we've got our pancetta. We've got, we're, uh, we've got our cracked black pepper, you know, and you also want to hit, the cheese is obviously a big component in the carbonara flavors. We are using Parmigiano or Mecangrana. You can use Pecorino Romano if it's out to your liking, which is made from sheep's milk. The uh, American Grana is made from cow's milk. And then uh, we're going to be finishing it with our egg yolks. And those are your classic ingredients that you'll see in a carbonara dish. Cavatelli going in. And use a little bit of the pasta water in there. There's different types of cavatelli. If you're getting one, uh, I recommend getting the uh, ricotta cavatelli. Black pepper, crushed black pepper, fresh. Ricotta cavatelli is actually one of the first pasta dishes that I remember having as a kid. And uh, you know, it's, it's tender. It's really, the, the moisture holds up really well. The texture of it is just, uh, it's just a little bit different. You know, it, it has a nice, clean, kind of soft uh, texture to it and the cheese just really pairs well. And obviously it's a ricotta, it's a cheese pasta and we're going with a mac and cheese sauce, so uh, they kind of go hand in hand. There's about one egg yolk in here. And what you need to be careful with the eggs, you want to just fold the eggs in. You don't want to really cook the eggs. If you cook the eggs, you end up with a scrambled mac and cheese. All right, black pepper. Right there. Back pocket spoon, all right. Sign of a true chef. <laughs> Salt. Salt's perfect. 
And you gotta remember that too, when you're working with things like bacon or pancetta, it has its own salt that's gonna blend into it. So always taste your food. So you can use any kind of uh, dish that's gonna be suitable for how much mac and cheese you're making, if you're making it for yourself or if you're making it for a group. But uh, these are cool little pans here. These are uh, just little mini cast irons. You can find them at uh, pretty much any, uh, any store that's selling uh, cooking equipment these days. You wanna have a dish that's gonna go into the oven. That's part of uh, you know, how we finish this dish off, is we're gonna top it with the cheese and the breadcrumbs, and then we're gonna uh, gratin it in the oven. Great Sunday dish. Creamy, it's cheesy, you got uh, you know all the different flavors going on of sweet, salty, you know, it's just, uh, it, it's really just a crowd pleaser. All so right. if you like the people at your house, they will come back and they will visit you again. Give me something to do here. Parmesan, okay. Touch more of this uh, smoked mozzarella, fontina, provolone. And you can do this, um, I recommend if you're doing it at home in, in your oven, you can put the broiler on. Your oven will be hot, but it'll also cook from the top down, which will help really give it that nice gratin. Gratin is a fancy word for? Gratin. <laughs> Translation, yes, gratin. If you ever heard of potatoes or gratin, yes, that's where it comes from. I would say, I mean, keep an eye on it. Not all ovens are created equal. Five minutes, maybe tops, is all you really need in the oven just to kind of bring everything you together just want and get the those cheese cheeses to melt. Yeah, the cheese to melt, the cheese to get bubbly, to come over the top a little bit. That's what you're looking for. And you want those breadcrumbs to really uh, cook into and, and top off that mac cheese so you have that nice crust when you're uh, breaking into it. All right, now we're gonna go back into the oven, pull out those gratin mac and cheese carbonara and see how they're doing, see how they're working. Look at that. Bubbly, man, creamy. Oh man. See, I knew you had to make two. You can bon have that, that one's yours, bon this appetit. one's mine. Bon appetit. For me, carbonara, I'm gonna finish it off with just a little bit of pepper. Get in there, creamy. Pretty good. Pretty, not pretty bad, good. Jeff, not bad at all. So the first thing that comes out for me is the smokiness from the pancetta and the combination of the smoky mozzarella with the provolone and the uh, parmesan for the richness, the egg finishing it. Yeah, Those are the, the flavors that from the pop. peas, it all just really comes together and you get that little bit of bite uh, at the end from the uh, cracked black pepper. And of course, we got that layer of crunch that comes from the uh, breadcrumbs on top. I love cooking this dish with my son. It's easy steps. It's a great family uh, dish to do at home. Who doesn't like a mac and cheese? And uh, this, uh, I think this steps it up just a little bit. Thank you for watching today. Please share, like, subscribe, tell all your friends, family about it. See you next time.